possibly four just to get together to play a rhythm. That's a lot of people you got to pay out to make some music, right? So, with the creation of the foot pedal, the bass drum, which we borrowed from Europe, all right, this is a, a European invention, as well as the snare drum. Both of these were created in the 1500s. And the cymbals, which really were created in, in China and later mass produced by Turkey, were added. And this other invention, the hi hat stand. The hi hat stand is very important because it again allowed us to use our foot, our left foot or, or right foot, depending upon what you are, to control the cymbals. Now you have one person playing with it before it took four people to do. And you could do a lot more intricate things because it was just one person controlling it all. It was one person trying to work with somebody else and all that stuff. But jazz was born. I, get, I say all this just to say that in the late 1800s, all right, going into the 1900s, this sound, which we call swing, swept the country. By the 1920s, this was everywhere. Everybody was in swing fever. But they would play like this in the 1920s, really fast to make people dance, all right? It was all about dancing. But but the drummer took all of his knowledge from the fields, the rudiments, the flams, the paradiddles, and combine it into this new style of playing, all right? And when I really say jazz was born, jazz was born. And it begat blues, which begat rock and roll, and everything else that's come. But this was the catalyst that drove it. And this is an African-American in innovation. I don't want to say invention, all right? But innovation, because these already existed, but just in a different form. African-Americans figured out how to put it together and make it groove, all right? So the contraption set we owe to our African-American pioneers. Now, the original sets you would see would have some wood blocks and some bells. They had everything that you could possibly imagine that you could hit. All right, so when you hear names like Warren, er, sorry, Warren Singleton and the Earl Dodds, those were, and Chick Corea, not Chick Corea, <laughs> Chick Webb, <laughs> Chick Corea is many years later. Chick Webb, those were some of the earliest drummers, all right, that helped really catapult us into what we do now. But before they even became prominent, we have to look at our music and trace it back to really where it started. Now, I'd already started talking about Africa, because Africa being a home of most of the slaves, we were already playing instruments and rhythms on our tamas. In South Africa, they call us a dundun. In West Africa, they call it a tama. Around the world, we call it a talking drum because it talks to you. It's based on the Fulani people in West Africa who, like us, have a range, of, a range in their vocal diction, I should say. They have highs, lows, but instead of speaking English, French, German, Hungarian, Japanese, or any language that we are familiar with, their language is based on sound. So if we were all Fulani, and you heard this drum talking to you, you would have an idea of what's being said, because it sounds very similar to the way that they speak, their, their dialect. It's all done by squeezing this drum. The more pressure I put on the drum, the higher it is. And when I take pressure off, the lower it gets. And when you hear this in context with the music, it really does sound like someone's talking to you. All right, so this is the tama. But Africans were playing that. They were playing in North Africa. They were playing their dumbeks.
right, this, this drum, not this specific drum, but this family of drums, it's been around at least 2,000 years. All right, if you're reading the Bible, the Quran, any old scripture, you'll hear mention of the tabla. And this is what they're referring to. Now, I call it a dumbek. That is its name. It's also tabla. In Turkey, the cousin of it, it's a little thinner, a little smaller, and it's made out of tin. This is made out of titanium. But the tin ones are called darbukas. But they look very similar. Now, this drum, the language of this drum says doom, tech, doom, tech, doom, tech, doom, tech. So for any drum that you want to play, you might have to learn, you have to learn how to make it speak and say what it's supposed to say. Otherwise, it's just saying a bunch of crazy stuff, right? But if you make this drum talk, and learn the appropriate rhythms that go with the drum, then someone else can play along with you or someone could dance for you, okay? So there is a science to this. It's not just us sitting up here just making up stuff. Nah, there's, you have to study and practice. So then here's my little caveat. Anything that you wanna do and do well, practice, practice, practice. Start now. Whether it's soccer, baseball, basketball, you name it, practice. Reading books. Now this has a cousin that came out of West Africa, and I didn't bring my traditional one just because it was under the weather. Yes, drums do get sick too. I went to grab my djembe, and this sounded so bad this morning because it was cold, and I was like, I can't not bring you today. But most djembe's, traditional djembe's, have a goat skin head, and they're made out of wood, very much similar to what this junjun is made out of. This is a Remo drum, which is actually like most of these other drums. They're a, com a company I endorse that's based in Valencia. And they've been mass producing drums from various cultures for about 30 years now. So any drums that you can find, whether it be Brazil, like those drums on the end, those tubanos, or even this tubano, um, the djembes, gym, gym, the ashikos. I didn't bring a lot of the other ones because I was focusing on Africa. But they make clone yaos from, from Thailand, taiko drums from, from Japan. They try and cover the world. But the djembe, It's one of the most popular drums in the world right now. And it's, it's, you can tell it right away by its shape. And I know this one's all beat up, but I kind of like it like that. <laughs> it uh, it's, uh, has a goblet shape. Can you all see the goblet in there? As opposed to the hourglass shape of this Doombeck. Yeah? Which one's bigger? Which one has a bigger belly? Yeah, all right. The big belly right here is where all that sound comes from. So it's going to be a much louder drum. Naturally. I can put the same pressure that I put on there, but this will carry much further. Now, this drum also has three tones. If you hit it right in the middle, you get a deep sound called the goon. The natural tone is called godo. Godo goon, godo goon, goon godo. And then there's a high pitch sound. There it is. Pata. And once you can make your drum say goon godo, pata, goon godo, pata, goon godo, then you can start playing some rhythms, okay? But until you can get that drum to say exactly what you need to say, I would just kind of do this. Just, just look at it and say, I'm going to get you one day. I'm going to figure it out. It took me many years to figure this thing out. But once I did, I was like, I got it. I felt like I had really accomplished something. Being a drum set player, you know, it's different when you go from sticks to hands. First of all, it hurts. And once you get used to that and you get over the fact it's going to hurt, there's a little pain, then you realize it's fun. Then you go, I've got to learn. But then you've got to put that thinking knowledge cap on you know, and just apply yourself and, and stay on it. Practice, like I was just telling you, you have to practice if you want to get something. That's the djembe. Now, another drum that goes back in time, and it's actually older in some respects than the djembe or the, or the dumbek. Now, I know you guys all told me these were what drums? Bongos. That's right, the bongos, the world's most popular drum. 
But the bongos, which you may or may not know, were based on an old African set of drum family of drums called the bata. The bata is an hourglass shaped drum that would sit across your lap. One side has a big head, the other side has a little head. And you play it like this, in this fashion. And as I mentioned, it has a family of three, the mother, the father, and the baby. And for most drums, the smallest drum in the family with the highest pitch is the baby drum. The biggest drum in the family with the lowest pitch is the mother drum. Mother gives life to the baby, that's why it's the biggest. And the father drum is there in the middle, keeping it all together. Now, but the bongos, based on the bata. So this was that little small size, real high pitched. And then you had that bigger side that had a low sound. Now, the thing about the bata, again, it was used for ceremonial worship. So you couldn't just hang out with your friends and play bata, even if it felt good. God, the, you know, the spirits just weren't into that. So the bongos were created so you could play anytime you wanted. Now, the thing about the bongos, because it's a paired drum, and it's the only one you see up here that actually has two different drums, you don't have to worry about trying to hit it in different places to produce those sounds. You have a naturally occurring rhythm. You have a high and a low. Every time you put a high next to a low, there's your natural rhythm. And if you put a little bit of meter on there, make it a little faster, it gets a little bit more interesting. You start to get some different effects out of people. Until, you know, you can't go anymore. But that's natural. It's just like with your mouth. If you go high, low, high, low, low, high, low, that's your rhythm, okay? It starts there. Two different sounds. So now with the bongo, you take that. played a lot together with the conga. Thank you, thank you. And the bongos and the congas, the timbales, if you have them, they go together to form your Latin percussion section or rhythm section, which is what you hear backing rumbas, guanamancos, salsa, merengue, any of that fun dance music for the most part that comes, that we think of from Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, Colombia, all right? Bongo and, jun and, and conga. But if you hear djembe's, and you see some June Junes, think more African. Now, the June June, I've been mentioning, I haven't really played it yet, though. The June June is this double headed drum, cow skin, that's played with a stick. And when you put this together with some djembe, and I really need an extra set of hands to play this together, but <laughs> you create most of the rhythms that are danced to in West Africa, that have been danced to since the great Malian Empire in the 15th century, all right? It goes back many years. Now, the Jun Jun is what type of shaped drum? Who knows what this is? Oval? Not quite oval. I would say this is maybe more oval or elliptical than this. But what kind of shape is this? Cyl say it one more time. Cylinder. That's right, it's a cylinder. Or cylindrical, okay? That's the adjective for it. Now, it's important that you know the shape because you can see exactly where it came from, pretty much, right? The cyl cylindrical shape frame or log. Now, we said this was what kind of shape? No, this was the hourglass. Goblet, that's right. And this is another hourglass. And...